number 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Look, the creation of God, we're without excuse. It is evident that God exists. God's own creation speaks unto us that there's a creator. The whole ecosystem, the way things work together, this can't have happened by chance. You have too many systems reliant on each other. It's too, it's too fragile in the sense that all of these multiple things, these various things need to exist and, and be in place in order for life to survive and to thrive. And, you know, in order for plants to grow, they need to be pollinated, which means they need insects to do that. Well, the insects need the, the, the plants to, to feed off of. You can't just have this stuff just happening simultaneously. Okay, it's, it's statistically impossible for that to just happen and just continue to survive. That these plants that, that require other, you know, other elements to exist all just happening simultaneously, it is ridiculously stupid to think that that can all happen at once. And people who claim they're so smart are really just a bunch of fools that actually believe in that nonsense because that's what it is. It's nonsense. The creation speaks. There is a creator. You don't walk across and find a clock or a watch on the ground and go, oh, wow, I wonder how this happened. I wonder what rocks came together and just formed and how many times lightning had to strike it in order for these gears to tick and have actually have a meaning and perform a function that looks intelligent. Nobody in their right mind would think that. You'd say, wow, I wonder who made this. They must be kind of smart because all these things work together and it performs a function. We could look at our world, even the way that the world self heals, even with the most toxic things that, that man can throw at it. God has built a system of filtering the, the toxins out in this world. It's incredible. It's amazing how God has done that. This isn't by chance. It's not by chance. Okay. There is a designer. There is a creator. All of your organs, you look internally or externally, you look out deep into space, or you look with a microscope deep inside of yourself, and you will see how amazingly intricate everything is that exists. And it's foolishness to say that there is not a creator. So verse 20 is basically explaining that. I know I kind of gave the long version, right? But the Bible's telling us here, the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. So this is people who, they understand, they know God, they've heard of God, they've seen what God can do, but they glorify him not as God. They're saying, yeah, that's not God. I can see a creation, that's not God. They profess themselves, oh, but I'm so smart. I can tell you why these things are without God. They became fools, and it says here, they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. So they basically just create their own God whether it be in the form of a man, themselves, whatever, right? A, an animal, a creature, they come up with their own God. So they understand God. They don't give glory to God as being the uncorruptible God. They just come up with their own. They create their own idol. Verse 24 says, wherefore, which means for this cause, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Okay, clear teaching from Scripture. First of all, unclean. What the Bible is about to describe is unclean. Not only is it unclean, it's dishonorable. Dishonoring your bodies. Verse 25, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. So, They've heard the truth. They've changed the truth into a lie and they care more about the creature than the creator. Verse 26, again, for this cause, God gave them up unto vile affection. That word vile means disgusting. Affections, right? Affections that you have towards people or towards things. Vile, horrible, disgusting things. Vile affections 
For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Okay. Who created things to be natural? God did. So, and he's going to explain this here. Look at verse number uh, 27. And likewise, so in the same manner. First, he says that the women change the natural use in that which is against nature, but he doesn't really get into any more detail than that, just saying what they're doing is unnatural. But then he explains more by relating it to the men. Verse 27 says, And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. So what is this talking about? This is talking about men lusting after men. They're not lusting after the woman, which is natural, which is the way God made everybody naturally a man lusts after a woman a woman lusts after a man and they want to have that affection they want to have that that relationship that is natural according to the bible that is normal that is the way god made everybody but you know what's unnatural when you have a woman with a woman or a man with a man that is unnatural it's not the way that god made people so if you believe the bible you cannot believe that oh i was born that way because that's not the way that god made them I don't care what anybody says. The Bible teaches here that it's not natural. Not only is it not natural, it's vile, it's disgusting, it's unclean, and it's dishonorable. And you know what? You see, people will say that God made me this way. In a sense, it's true. They weren't born that way. But like it says in verse 26, for this cause, when they gave up on God, when they made up their own God, when they didn't want to glorify God as being God, verse 26 says, for this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. God gave them up. When you are just completely unrestrained by your conscience to do whatever your wicked heart wants to do, it'll lead you into all manner of perversion and wickedness. See, we have a conscience that keeps us naturally from doing certain things. There are some things you just won't do because it's too disgusting. It's too vile to bring yourself to do because God has given you that conscience and that guide to not do those things. But when God has given that up and he's taken away that conscience, now you're left to do whatever because... It's not that disgusting anymore. It's not that perverted anymore. There is no more restraint. Verse 28 says, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, they didn't want God. They're the ones choosing to not want God. They didn't want to retain God in their knowledge. It's not like God just came across these people and said, Nope, you're gonna, I'm just going to sear your conscience. They didn't want to have anything to do with God. They knew who God was. They glorified him not as God. They created their own God of whatever was in their own heart, what they wanted. That's the point where God turns them over to this reprobate mind. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Verse 29, now there, here's the attributes of these people. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, now look, that first part of verse being filled with, this isn't just, oh, they've done this once or twice. They're filled with this stuff. This is, this is like an overflowing of all of these sins. And even halfway through the verse, in case you forgot that it said filled with all, he says full of envy, right? He's just repeating that they're full of this. They're full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents without understanding, covenant breakers without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, they know it, they know it's not right, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are, wait, what does that say in the New Testament? They that commit such things are what? Worthy of death. Amen. Oh, but that's the Old Testament law. I'm sorry, this is Romans chapter 1. You have Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. This is the sixth book. We're well into the New Testament. Yeah. These people 
that is describing know that they which do such things are worthy of death? How is it that Christians today don't know that these things are worthy of death? 